right. and that they were going to actually start setting out the links for our app and you can do your own net sheets on there. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. It has net sheets, it has you can put your orders in through the app. You can contact me through the app. It's really cool. Awesome. So I just forgot to hit the record button. So I'm going to say one more time. This is Teresa for the recording when it comes out later with my title company. Guys, I use her for all of my deals that are here in San Antonio. That makes sense for me. They're independently owned, operated. This is the owner. This is the CEO. This is, I mean, it, so it's great. And they, they, they have the capacity to handle a lot going on here. They're at like basically 281 and 1604, uh, if that helps at all. But um, we just closed a deal in Wisconsin. We, yep, we did. <laughs> like, I mean, guys, wherever, if the deal's here in San Antonio, I use her because I know she's going to take care of it. Wherever. I know they're great people. We, we where, are where in people. Wisconsin, Colin? I don't, well, no, the deal, the property was here. Oh. Uh, and then okay. she moved to Wisconsin halfway through it. I was about to say, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> He's reaching for the stars yeah so no 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 uh i moved to wisconsin but she facilitated the closing through wisconsin so got um, it which gets a little because it wasn't like madison wisconsin it was it was like bfe a, wisconsin they were out there stuck in corn mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was a tough one to figure that one out so she's fantastic they have a Thank new you. app you can download it you can do your net sheets which i'm tired of people asking me about net sheets get the app <laughs> do your own net sheet it's really easy if you use them on an app so so today's conversation guys is uh, today is the 15th of September, and I have to be honest with you, when I saw this roll out, I had no clue what was going on. Um, on September 1st, everybody, you should have gotten the email from Trek talking about this PID thing. And I saw that email, and I got to be honest with you, I had to take the last two weeks off from training. One, I was in Cleveland for a wedding, and two, I can't remember what the other one was, but I was out of pocket. I just couldn't do it. But I spent that time kind of looking into what this PID was because I had honestly never heard of it until all of a sudden this email drops on August 30th or 31st going, hey, PID, guess what? If you screw this up and what really caught my attention, and I'm going to say this to you a hundred times because this is the part that you will screw up, is if you do not have this PID amendment, the buyer can back out at any time. The buyer can back out at any time beyond the option period, beyond the financing period. They can back out at any time simply because you forgot this. And that's the kind of thing that I like to forget. Um, these one little bitty one-off things that'll screw the whole contract up. And guys, I can't imagine being under contract for 38 days. And then all of a sudden they go, yeah, never mind. You didn't tell us about the PID. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Because that's that's just my kind of luck. So I really wanted to, to drive this home with you. So that's why I've been so adamant about it on the Facebook group. Because I really wanted everybody to know what's going on here. So... Even though I've done my research, <laughs> I still wanted to talk to somebody who's smarter than me. Um, so I'll that way we really know. <laughs> and she's already she's already schooled me on a lot of things just sitting here uh, BSing with her before we got this whole thing started. So before we go, I'm gonna I'm just gonna ask the questions. I'm gonna let you go yes. with it. What is the PID? What is a PID? Let's start with the first thing. I mean, I'm, I and again, I'm full disclosure. I don't filter anything, so. Mm, yep. Just say it welcome, like it's going to be. Welcome to the white line culture. Yeah. yeah. No. Um, I was really surprised by this PID, just like everybody was. I mean, they say it's equivalent to the MUD district, the municipal utility district. But in reality, I don't believe that it is. I looked it up. And I went to our underwriters. I've done some research since Colin and I were, were talking about mm -hmm. this. But it's the public improvement district, a public improvement district. According to all the research that we've done, it's basically a taxation for people to enhance the subdivisions. And it gives you a list of landscaping, lighting and signs, construction improvements, you know, uh, accounting for installing pieces of decorations. You're gonna pay a higher price for this to make sure that neighborhood's maintained at a higher quality. And it says that in the actual verbiage to maintain it at a higher standard. So what's really interesting is the way Teresa said it to me the very first time. And she goes, it's basically like an HOA. <laughs> Or when an HOA can't run their shit, okay? Well, that's what I thought. And, and so it's basically like you have a forced com uh, community HOA, okay? And it's, it's, it is obligatory. And it's enforced by the county. And it's enforced by the county, not the city, not the state, but by the county, okay? So which is really interesting. She's going to talk about it in a minute. I mean, the difference between Bear County and Comal County right now is actually quite drastic mm -hmm. in this PID case. So um, we, we are going to talk about that. So... It's basically an H it's a county enforced HOA. Okay. But the term is public improvement district. So y'all can see how that kind of rings true. Is everybody tracking with me on that? Okay. So 
What this is most important for is on the seller side. If you are representing the seller, it is important that you provide notice of this. So guys, once again, this is one of those things that I'm going to do before I input anything into the MLS. I'm gonna have all this documentation and I'm gonna find out if they are in a PID, this is gonna go on my checklist. So I, I need to update our checklist. I need to write that down. Um, so, which I haven't done. So how do we provide notice? You, well, it says it should be a, a new amendment to the contracts. And it has to be signed by the buyers and the sellers at the time the contracts signed and accepted and get this guys, then it has to be signed again at title at the closing. So we have to have it signed at the closing table if it is. But your problem when you're in starting this search is these counties have no regulatory policies in place of when they have to let the county know so we all have public district lists. It says in these documents that if we don't see it a public record and you do your research, it says MLS is one of the best places to look for it that it is our responsibility, yours and ours, to go research it and try to find one if we think it's out there. To me, that's freaking ridiculous. So basically, Trek came out with this form saying, hey guys, you have to fill this form out, but none of the counties have their act together with it, period, okay? Um, so yeah, that's gonna kind of suck. Uh, we're gonna have to go to the counties. We're gonna talk about that in just a little bit. Teresa, would you recommend for, like me personally, I'm, I'm kind of lazy about this stuff, so I wanna get it done on the front end. Would you recommend filling out this addendum and just putting it in the associated docs in the um, MLS? Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you here at, at our office, if just taking an example, if one lender asks for one document, we're going to send it to every lender. Mm -hmm. We're going to cover our base so, so that one, it doesn't delay y'all stuff. But same thing, put it in there. If it's not in there, we won't use it, but it's not going to hurt to have it in there. And it's going to cover this whole list of fines and people that can be sued. Yeah. The seller can be sued up to $5,000. Or they can back out at any time on this contract. Now, you want to talk about getting a Trek complaint because you weren't aware of this and the seller gets sued $5,000? Guess who they're coming after for that five grand? So quick question. Can I have a question? Sure. Um, so the public, is that like an environment zone, like an improvement zone area where more buildings are becoming like is opportunity zone is what it's called? Is no, that? it's different than the opportunity zone. So the opportunity zone is going to be specific for the investors okay okay that that's going to give you certain tax benefits all that kind of stuff with that that that's totally different so i want you to kind of strike that from today's conversation we, we i should do one on opportunity zones because that's that is a good one because uh, i know we like to do a lot of investing stuff so uh we'll, we'll definitely do a separate video about that but for today no okay the opportunity zone is basically the the, the difference, guys, the opportunity zone is the county, it's the county, is trying to funnel money from outside investors into this area. This one is like a county imposed HOA. Does that make sense, Zagla? Tracking with me? Okay, cool. I like the barriers, by the way. I love it. I love it. <laughs> That's Wednesday fun day. Love it. Okay, so guys, you can get the track, guys, wherever you get your promulgated forms, you can go to the Trek website, you can get the form there. Uh, you, you've seen me do a thousand videos. I go to zip forms for everything. Uh, so it's going to be uploaded into zip forms. Get that. Sit. Find out if you're doing this at, at your initial meeting when you're filling out all the other stuff. You know what I mean? It's like when you go get your T47, when you do your seller's disclosures, when you do all of that stuff, this is when you need to do this. And you need to do the research on that. Okay, guys? So make sure you're doing that. I would think sellers probably don't have know, even know if they're in a pit. I, I, guys, the counties are so far behind on this yes. that I doubt they're enforcing anything. I doubt they're saying anything. They may or may not even know. So it's going to be your responsibility. I mean, I went, I mean, literally, Colin and I, we started researching it. So when we researched, we did find out, we went to Bear County. I mean, every title company in the state of Texas is probably like us. Well, not as good as us, but they're like us. They have, they can issue anywhere in the state of Texas. So we searched Bear County and we searched Comal County. Bear County, there's only 11 subdivisions that are affected by the PID, the PID right now. And I mean, we got it do off you, of- Do you have any idea how many subdivisions are in Bear County? Oh my God, there's, there's like thousands, thousands. thousands of them. And there's 11. I mean, we have like Crosswinds at South Lake Special Improvement District, West Side 211. I mean, they're really odd ones, but Comal County has several too, but they're not even listed yet. And just so you know, the chapter, the chapters, the regulations, there's 372 and number 382 for Comal. Comal just has a list of the boards. So within this county, 
mandated PID. Then they're going to elect a board, just like your homeowner association board. And then they're going to have the board make the decisions on how to spend this money. However, the description of me is hilarious because it says, this is improved so that people have a more voice of what's going on in their subdivisions. They're not going to have any more voice if it's in with their board. The board members are going to make the decision. Are the board members elected, do you know? Um, or are they just appointed? It looked to me like they were elected because it's, it has a president, it has literally a whole board members. Yeah. So I would probably think they're elected, but it's going to be the same people making the same rules. Yeah. Gotcha. So quick question. This right here, guys, she printed this out. This is where, these are the 11 PUDs. For Bear County. Or PIDs, excuse me. I'm still not even used to saying it. For yeah. Bear County. Where did you find that? Um, I can share the link. I just started searching for PIDs in mm -hmm. Bear County and it gave me a link for it. Okay. Um, and then it gave me the So guys, Google board Bear too. County yeah. Public Improvement District, right? And actually there's an entire website on it. Already. I mean, for like Bear a, County? Yeah, it's just huge. The information that's on there, none of it made much sense why I had it, but it's, it's all on there. Comal's is not as ready yet, um, but Comal is going to well, I can, I mean, guys, that's going to be, I mean, Comal's a smaller, I mean, yes, New Braunfels is huge. There's a lot going on over in Comal, mm -hmm. but their, their actual county processing is a lot smaller than Bear County is. And I'm assuming Guadalupe County is going to be even worse. And then, you know, you go to Carnes County, it's going to be even oh, worse. You know what I mean? So you're, you're going to have to do a little bit of research. But what I'm personally going to do is I'm going to save all this stuff on my computer. I'm going to go and I'm going to look this up. <laughs> I'm going to save it somewhere on my computer and I'm just as soon as I get to a house that's in a neighborhood and once and guys you all know how to look up the neighborhoods whenever you're putting stuff in the MLS just cross reference it this has just got to be on your checklist of things to cross reference and also keep in mind I mean I know you all know what a commitment for title insurance looks like this should appear on schedule B of your commitment I have put a call into one of my favorite underwriters that I like and we need to I'm going to make sure it's on there because I'm MUD, the Municipal Utility District, is always on Schedule B because it's a subject to item. This is going under the same platform, so it should be a PID exception to that policy. So it should be always on Schedule B of the commitment for title insurance. So, guys, if that, that right there is really big because I always tell you that your Schedule C needs to be the one thing that you are most important in, in paying attention to. You're going to have to pay more attention to Schedule B, too. Okay, so just read the whole title commitment. Also, I put in a call to JL Gross, they're our tax certification company, because according to what we researched, it is supposed to be collected by the county and should appear on all tax certificates. So I've got a call in for them. I don't have an answer, but I can let you know what they say, because I need to make sure that they're going to be adding this to your tax certificates. And if, as an agent, I'm just going to put this into, it's a little bit off track, but you should always ask for a tax certificate. When you get your commitment for title insurance, have your title officer or the assistant send you the tax certificate because that'll give you the actual tax rates what exemptions are on there and if there's exemptions that you know shouldn't be on there like someone passed two years ago and they're writing off coattails get it cleaned up now so they don't come back to bite you later yeah but it's supposed to be on that tax certificate and i'll i'll get that to you as soon as i find out what's going on so basically uh i'm going to translate this in colin speak <laughs> when the title company emails you something read it okay I know there is a lot of documents and they use a lot of small print. And I wish that the same rules with the closing disclosures, you know, it's like these six things are big and bold, but they're not. Um, pay attention, guys, pay attention. So I, I like that piece of advice because I got to be honest, I'm bad about looking at the tax certificate. Well, I do tend to go to like the, the, the appraisal yeah, district yeah. And, and I'll look at that, but I don't look at the actual tax certificate, which I know has a lot more information. It does have a lot of information. That's what, but two, I know we're getting a little bit off topic, but with this PID, it's very important to look at Schedule B. If there's something wrong with your commitment, y'all, I appreciate the fact when someone reads their commitment and calls me and says, I just read my commitment, literally, I have to wait and clear the tears out of my eyes because no one ever says those words to me very often. But your title agent should be saying, hey, Colin, here's your commitment. Yikes. You know, look on Schedule C, and these are the items that you should be helping us clear up right now. Because we, we don't expect y'all to be out there reading all of our commitments. We, it'd be nice. But we'd rather you go out and get deals to make us money in here. I'm not going to lie. So yeah. I mean, that's just the way it should be. But so what you're me. saying is you're guaranteeing that all of your escrow officers will hold our hands and wipe our butts with everything and tell us what we're thinking. Pretty much what we do with you every day, Colin. <laughs> that's why I like it. Um, so, but the title company's role, what is the title company's role on this besides making sure there's a, an ink copy? Mm -hmm. At closing, 
what other roles does the title come according to this it says that we're supposed to research also so our role is basically you come in with the deal and i haven't trained all my staff yet but i'm going to do the same thing that we're doing here today so if i don't see a pid on my schedule b i'm gonna i'm gonna link this site search my address and if it's on there i'm gonna have to get my examiner because remember if it's on there and if, if we find one afterwards it has to be added to your commitment or it's not real until it's yeah. there so we're going to research it also but trust me if we find it and, and y'all we will call you yeah and tell you to get an amendment because this is going to be an issue because they're really setting out fines and they're hitting loopholes hard. that are ridiculous they're hitting you hard on something that nobody's prepared to get hit hard on if, if that makes any sense this is in my opinion kind of unfair at this point but it's not our rules it's trek rules guess whose rules we got to follow so yeah. you know you know bitch and moan all you want but it, it doesn't matter because it still got to go forward so a couple of things that i want to do in here guys if you're anything like me and let's say you forgot to check it out mm -hmm. okay let's say i didn't do it we're 15 days into the contract. We just got pat out of option. And all, all of a sudden it hits me like a ton of bricks, which that's going to happen to me about a hundred times between We're human. The, yeah, We're human. before I get, I get into the habit of thinking of this thing, guys, if notice is furnished at or before closing, the buyer is to presume to have waived the rights to terminate. So if the minute you, if you have not done it on the front end, which you should, or if you get it when the title commitment comes back, mm -hmm. or if something else happens at that exact moment, you need to stop what you're doing and get this amendment turned in. Okay, get everybody to sign it because that's going to make them. That's going to get. That's going to save them from their out. Okay, and it's also going to save you from getting hit for five thousand dollars. And they're not giving it. I didn't see a time in there. Like once they have five days, like an option. I didn't. Did you see it? No, no. There's not a timeline in there, but they can. They can terminate at any, at any, at any point. Time. But they can't say, well, I didn't, I, you know, they can't say, Correct. well, I just got it, but I went 10 days before I can sign That's it. When they get it, it's, it's hands up. It's hands up. Okay. All right. Yeah. That, that, that's, from my understanding, that's how once I they saw get it, it, it's hands up. Yeah, yeah. That's how I saw it. Too. Yeah. And then the other thing is, is guys, what about contracts I already have open? It doesn't matter. It this is, is for any contract that has been entered into as of on or September, on or after September 1st. Right. So if you're midway through a contract right now, guys, that you signed back in August, you're fine. Don't panic. Okay. It's anything from September 1 going forward. So that, that's another big course, one. Of course, today's the 14th. So if you have any contracts 15. in the escrow, today, oh, is it 15? <laughs> Jeez, God. I did the same thing. Can I go back But I was day? two days off. I need more day. time. If you have one in escrow right now, just reach out because I can guarantee you, and I'm not even going to lie to you. I This went over my radar. Colin brought it to my attention. I'm not going to lie. I'm a nerd. Colin brought it to my attention, and immediately we started all the research on it. So if you have a file in escrow right now, call your escrow officer or their assistant. Say, could you do me a favor? New regulations, call PID. Can you get with your underwriter and make sure this property is not, or your examiner, in a PID? And let them- It might just be good practice. Me. I mean, legally, if, it, if you did it before September 1st, you don't have to, but it, it'll be good practice if you got an open contract. You, you might be helping your escrow team. Yeah, and you might be, yeah. Like I said, this is- if I wasn't just reading my email one day, which, you know, normally you get those trick emails and you just delete them, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But for some reason, this one caught my eye because it was like, hey, new rule. So I like to keep abreast of all the rules. So um, what other things would you tell us about a PID beyond that? From what I can research, a tax on it is not real high. So okay. I don't think we have to go crazy is what they're, you know, when you disclose the property taxes. Right, right, right. And um, Comal County was 90 cents. So per annum, yeah. Okay, wow. <laughs> so and then they have the right to activate it or not, just like a municipal utility district. So I will do my best for y'all's end if I get a contract in here in one year or stuff that I'm working on. If it's a PID, I'll research it all for you. I'll tell you what the tax figures are. I'll get if it even it's not on the tax certificate, I'll notify them to get that information. But I don't think it's going to be astronomically high towards driving everybody out of buying a home. Right. And the form at closing i don't even have the form yet <laughs> oh do you want me to pull it up um that has to be signed at closing mm -hmm. yeah i don't have that one yet hold on one moment please i'll look at him i think i can do this we think you can i think i can i think i can all right do, 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 do. give us a few so i'll show no I'll, this is guys this is exactly how i'm doing this I'm going to go to zip forms. You know, the other one you could do is I would Google Trek PID form. Oh, crap. There's too many things on the screen. 
I'm used to doing this without all this. Um, notice the protectors buyers. I bet you this is it. Yep, there it is. Ta-da. So here's a new form. There's not a lot to it, guys. It, it, they, you, but the way I'm thinking about this is when this person buys this house, mm -hmm. they have a fee that they have to pay. It's the same as like an HOA. You know what I mean? You have to tell them, hey, if you move in this neighborhood, you're paying an HOA. Okay, it's the same kind of thing. Guys, look how simple this is. Okay. Oh, look, yeah. See, the broker, the sales associate can actually fill this thing out. So that's it. No, wait, this is the utility district one. No, not that one. Crap, sorry. Back. New history. Well, this one, no, that's page one of three dated. I want the one. Let's see if we can find a copy of this form. I did see it and I should have had it more ready. Is it this one? That's the memo. Guys, read this memo. Yeah, that memo is good. That's what started my research. That memo while he's doing that also gives you the chapter information, the 372 and the 382. And if you go to the search those chapters, you can find all the subdivisions information. So the 372, again, that's for Bear County and the 382 is for Comal County. And guys, I am recording this. So <laughs> you can go back and try and figure out what you just said. <laughs> it wasn't that jarble. Well, there's a lot of numbers. <laughs> Where did I find this? I know I've seen it. Oh, I know I've seen it. Sorry, guys. I should have had this ready. Do y'all have any questions about how to present this or what you know at this point that we can help you with? Anybody? Um, Man, we did that good of a job teaching it? I have a, I have a question. Can y'all can hear me? Oh, oh. Yeah, go ahead, Isaac. Yeah, so, um, I mean, I, I, I don't really do a whole lot of... Um, just I don't do a whole lot of transactions at this point right I'm I'm more like buying for for me or helping other people buy investment properties um so as a as a buyer um or a buyer agent this is something that I don't necessarily have to it, it's it's something that I have to be aware of but it's not something that's going to get me in trouble necessarily unless I'm not telling my buyer like to look into it or looking into it myself for the buyer? Well, I, I'm gonna put it this way. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it this way. If you upset, like if somebody buys a house and doesn't realize there's an additional tax on there, yep, you I'm could liable. get in trouble for that. Uh -huh. They could come after you for not telling them. Right, right. That makes sense? Yep. So here's the form guys. Finally found the form. Um, I mean, it is on the Trek website, the addendum containing notice of obligation to pay improvement district assessment. That's a mouthful. Mm. Okay, so here's your form right here, guys. The assessment to insert the name of the municipality or county levying. So as of this point, they're all counties. I they think. are all our counties. Yeah. I was just looking at it, trying to see because they have a um, something about the buyer's agent. I was going to see if I could find them. Yeah, second thing. Okay, so then property address, that's pretty easy. As the purchaser of the real property described above, you're obligated to pay assessment to, again, Bear County, Guadalupe County, same thing. Uh, I'm assuming municipalities are going to start doing it. I, I yes. didn't. I mean, I, guys, again, I've had 13 days to research this, yeah. 14 days. So, you know, it's, it's, I don't see any cities yet. Uh, for the cost of the portion of public improvement service projects undertaken for the benefit of the property within, Again, this is the public district. So as of right now, all the ones I've seen have been like community names. Yes, like, I have, I've not seen any like street names yet. Yeah. I've just seen subdivisions. Yeah, subdivisions, yes. right? So yes. like I live in Bluffy, so Bluffy of Community Real, right? So that's what you would put there. Created under, now this is the government code, insert subchapter A, this, this, and that. Is that attached to? That's 372 of 82. That's, that's on, yes. Do you want, I can send you all this. Yeah, I'm probably going to put that up on this thing too. I can send you. So one. yeah, there's 372 and 382, but I'm wondering if they're listed under which one of these there are. Nope, we're going to have to figure that one out, ladies and gentlemen. I'll send you the link. Yeah, I'm going to have to come back. Um, 
subchapter A, 372 local. I'm going to have to figure that out. Um, and by the way, guys, call your escrow officer. Mm -hmm. That's it. I'm gonna, not going to lie to you. As soon as I get something, and I'm going to get to this again, and I'm probably going to forget between now and then, I'm going to call her and go, did you figure it out yet? Yeah. <laughs> um, an easement's been levied against your property, yada, yada, yada. That doesn't matter. The exact amount of this easement must be obtained from Bear County. And the exact amount of each annual installment will each year will be approved by Bear County, right? And it seems like it's the same thing over. More information about this assessment can be from Bear County. And then sign, sign. And then, guys, I would have all this filled out, sign, sign. And just like I do with T47, just like I do anything else, I just put it on the uh, associated docs in my MLS system. And then I just wanted to come back to this. The buyer actually, even after closing, has a claim. Oh. So after, <laughs> after closing, if they find out they're in a PID, they can also go back and have the property reconveyed to the seller. Never mind, I don't want it. Take your house back. Mm -hmm. And then we got to exchange all the money that they've already gotta, spent. It says you got to give them the money back. Mm -hmm. Any money you just cost for purchase a home. So, yeah, Isaac, <laughs> they can hit you pretty hard. Um, it says buyers can file a lawsuit of damages after closing. Them. Buyers may file suit requiring sellers to return all costs related to the purchase of the property back to the buyers with the buyers reconveying the property back to the sellers. Alternatively, buyers may have a file of suit against the sellers also, but that suit cannot exceed five thousand dollars. <throat> so there you go. Yeah. So, so would, buyer, this, would this be something to look out for for wholesale deals as well? Because I know we never really looked at HOAs with wholesales. Well, on my wholesales, I look at HOAs. Okay. Because if not, when we issue that title policy, we're guaranteeing that all the assessments are paid. Uh -huh. So if the HOAs are not paid, then the title company has to eat them, and I don't take kindly to that so we actually do resale certificates okay for hoas collect them transfer fees we do it just like a one to four family out of respect to our clients you, you know i take a lot of uh cues you know hillary and marco have been doing this for a long time and, and uh and i really like talking to them about it because that i mean they do seller's disclosures they do everything as if it was a traditional transaction because even though they're in the middle of it and they're technically not the buyer or the seller mm -hmm. they they just don't want anything to fall back on them so Disclose, disclose, right now, disclose, disclose. Right now, 40% of our business here at the MTC is wholesale and investment. Deals. I'm telling you, I got these wholesalers. Um, but I actually asked my wholesalers to do a trek for me. I asked them, please don't use these one. You wrote it on a napkin while you were driving in your truck. Form, you know, <laughs> do one to four family because I feel like it protects everybody. It does, it does protect everybody a lot more because if you're right, if you, oh, I paid $75 for this to give me their purchase agreement. We were just, or, we, or bill of sale. we were laughing about that earlier. She said she got two phone calls in a row from people that bought a one to four family house, like legitimately yep. tried to buy it. And they did it with a bill of sale. Literally, they just wrote on the back of a bar napkin, you can have my house now, please give me $50 a month. And then they handed it to them. And then they realized that they needed a deed and all this other paperwork, so she, I'm sure to insure it. They're probably trying else. to refinance or something. Or refinance and it. now they wouldn't, they wouldn't know how I could give them a deed. I said, did you buy a horse? Yeah. I, you can buy a horse with the bill of sale. You cannot buy a... You can, buy a, you can buy a mobile home with a bill of sale. Unless it's attached to the unless property. It's atta unless it's got a HUD attachment. But, but, but yeah, but the two, two in 44 years, just called this week, <laughs> wouldn't know how to get a deed from their bill of sale. So yeah, use Trek 1 to 4. You're licensed too, people. You're licensed. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Use the 1 to 4. Don't get in trouble over that. That's too easy to get in trouble over. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. So um, that's it. Any other questions we got? Put this on your radar. Every house you buy or sell, I need you to think, what was that PID thing that Colin was babbling about? And then go back and watch this video, okay? Every single transaction, buyer, seller, doesn't matter. P-I-D. Hmm, what was Colin talking about? We got to go back and take a look at it. So and we just right, that's all I got, unless y'all got any more questions. We just searched that website, right? What? The Bear County Public Improvement. And then from there, we can Hello. find out if it's in that area. Yeah. I think we searched oh, the website. Yeah. Uh, so I'm assuming. <laughs> Bear County Public Improvement District. Mm -hmm. List of other agencies. San Antonio report. I would start with Bear County for dang sure. So this is the West Side 211 Public Improvement District. They've got their own website. 
There you go. No, those are special improvement districts. Where did you find that, Teresa? Because I saw it too. Can you share that on the group when you? I will. No. And it said on there when I found. <laughs> it said on there when I found it. It said they were eleven affected by it. So let me find that link because it kind of made it a little bit more. I know title people love reading, but we have a lot to read. So I just kind of looked at yeah. big print. <laughs> oh, there it is. Here. Well, that was, was way too easy, Colin. Yeah, I know. Just right. You're very bright. Is that haircut? I uh, mean, I run faster too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oops. P R O V E. T-R-I-C-T-S dot com. Let's see if I type that in correctly. Nope. D-E-X-A-R-C-O. Bear County Special Improvement. Not S. District. D-A-S-T-R-I-C-T-S dot com. There you go. There we go. Oh, look. Isn't that a beautiful picture? You have to say that, right? That is so pretty. Mm -hmm. Actually, watch this, guys. Bookmark. See how easy that was? So take a minute, write that. So it's Bear Co. Special Improvement Districts. The plurals on districts. So uh, here they are, Cibolo Canyons, Westside 211. You saw that, they had their own website here. Crosswinds at South Lake Special Improvement District. I don't, oh, Briggs Ranch. I hope somebody buy a house there a couple months ago. But Briggs Ranch has got an HOA too. That's they all have one. HOAs. Oh, they all have HOAs. That's what I'm saying. It's almost like they put an HOA in a place within within the HOA. Oh, this because is the be, HOA dude, couldn't do their job. Gonna, this is gonna be such a good fight because somebody's gonna go out there and put Christmas lights up. The other person's gonna say, "No, I was." Oh, this is gonna end up in a. This is no, gonna end up as a cluster. This is this is gonna be insane. But again, I just have to. La, the, la, 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 la. Yeah, I love this. Pid a pid allows for improvements at a higher and a higher degree of maintenance within the PID area, which presumably enhances the property values. Presumably. I love the that's, that's why That's why they put this in place. This is gonna be a mess, guys, promise. But just remember, what was that, that PID thing that Colin was battling about? If you get lost, call your escrow officer. Yes. I, I, that's, I, I, um, she knows it's coming. I'm going to be wearing her out with it. Um, yeah. And, and whatever escrow you use, do, do them a favor. Let me speak for them. Call them, send them an email saying, can you send me whatever information you have on fit? Or can we talk, set up a conference call? So and we do not be surprised if they have no clue what's going on. Yeah. I mean, do your people a favor. Everybody, we work as a team. And if you have signed a contract, either as buyer or seller after on or after September 1st, you need to do this today. Mm -hmm. Today. Got it? All right, ready, break. Anybody else? Anything else? You want one more close up of me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, nothing else. All right, guys. Well, that's it. Thank you so much. I will get this thing edited and popped up on the website for later. Thank you so much for being here. Thank y'all. Be safe. Good luck, you guys. Bye, y'all. Bye bye. Bye.